So this is a capacitor. Big whoop, eh? What a thing to get excited about. It's a thousand farad, 50 volt electrolytic capacitor, but the same is going to be true for any capacitor that we use. And I think that um, we all know about these things. I mean, essentially they're used for energy storage or filtering on an AC circuit, that kind of thing. And until recently, that's all I thought about them, really. But they're actually much weirder than that. They can do some pretty amazing things when you put them in the right circuit. And the circuits don't actually need to be that complicated. So let me have a show you this circuit. Now you can see essentially all it is is a capacitor connected to a ground and then two switches either side of the capacitor. I've implemented that circuit here. For my two switches I'm using a relay. To control the relay, so that is to control the switches, I've wired a switch across the coil input from this 12 volt power supply I've got here. All that does is turn on the coil and operate those switches so that no switches are in the same position. When one switch is closed, the other one is open. When that same switch is open, the other one is closed and to do that I've got a double pole double through a relay which is right here. Then I've connected this capacitor there to the ground on the other side of the um, power supply incidentally and then between those switches as we just saw in the circuit diagram. So the only difference between this and the circuit diagram is I've got a little control switch here to control those switches through the coil on the relay. Now, if you have a look at the voltage out that I'm reading, there it is, that's the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage out of that circuit, 3.4 volts. And of course my voltage in right there is 3.4 volts. Now then, watch this! I think that is far more awesome than it first appears. Let's, let's do it again! So there's the voltage, which is pretty much the voltage in. Start pressing that switch. And the voltage out changes depending on how fast I press that switch. That is super cool. Now it's super cool because these things can actually be printed. So when they make an integrated circuit, then they can include the switch and the capacitor in that printing. So that integrated circuit doesn't need to have resistors external to it or resistors added on. The resistor is a capacitor switch network where the resistance value or the voltage drop across it, which is exactly what a resistor is doing, is dependent on the frequency of the switch that we press. Now, that's great for making a straightforward resistor and kind of exciting in its own way, but it does allow you to do other things. Depending on that frequency, that voltage will change, and so we can create a step of voltage. So we can use switches in a capacitor to actually create, simulate a sine wave. And of course what we're getting when we simulate a sine wave is an inverter. We can use a DC input with a switch to create a sine wave through a capacitor and have a capacitor-only inverter. So not only can um, Capacitors act as resistors. This little setup, a little bit more complicated, but basically this little setup can be used to construct an inverter. And that begins to get very exciting, of course, because you can get rid of all that iron that you need when you use a transformer. So instead of using inductance, we can use capacitance to create an inverter. Anyway, I thought I would show you that simple circuit because you can bet your bottom dollar we're going to explore that more. But that is the basics of what we're going to explore. So when we look at capacitor-based inverters later, it will come back to capacitors as a resistor through switching a capacitor at frequency. Now, I've gone through the math of this on the members channel, but I won't include it here. If you do want to read up about it, then there's plenty of information out there on how these things actually work. But I hope you enjoyed this quick and introductory visit vi video to these capacitive switch networks, and we will be following it through. So please remember to like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed this video.